I'm Greg Garbus of Four Season Tools. What we're going to talk about is how to install an irrigation system for high tunnels. This is an overhead irrigation system, and what we're going to talk about right now is how to build basically the manifold or all the components that meet where the garden hose comes into the system to where it goes up into the multiple zones inside the high tunnel. This is an example of what we're building here. We have the water come in from a garden hose, we have a manual shutoff valve, we've got a filter, a pressure reducer, it splits into two zones. Since the high tunnel that this is going into is a 30 foot wide high tunnel and the emitter heads that we have are 16 feet in diameter, we'll have two zones that will be able to adequately overhead irrigate the entire high tunnel. So this is what we're shooting for is the completed manifold and what we have in front of us down here is an exploded view. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the different components that go into the system. Starting at the garden hose end, uh, where you go attached to a spigot, you always are attaching with a female end of, uh, of a garden hose. So we have these full flow quick connects. There are different quick connects available. We like the full flow quick connects because it doesn't restrict any of the flow of the water. The female end will always go to the spigot of the house, so what we do is we make sure that the female end goes to the spigot of the house and that the opposite end comes into the hose. With the system, we sell two sets of quick connects to ensure that we, there's enough for one full garden hose to quickly move the garden hose in between multiple buildings. After the full flow quick connects, we then come in to a fitting. This fitting right here is a female thread on this end to a barb fitting. The barb fitting refers to these little barbs because what it does is it goes inside of the irrigation hose. The irrigation hose that we're using is three quarter inch irrigation nut line, so we go from a garden hose female thread through a three quarter inch barb fitting. This irrigation line comes in a big, uh, big hundred foot roll. Uh, you can cut it easily, we just use a little pair of shears right here, and this allows it just to quickly cut right through the hose and allows it, uh, it's a very simple way of cutting the hose. So we went ahead and we pre-cut six pieces that are going to be long enough to put our manifold together. After, so the irrigation hose is held to any of the barb fittings with hose clamps. We've got two hose clamps here. Then we go into our manual shutoff valve with a barb end on each side. Another short piece of hose with two hose, uh, hose clamps. Another barb to female th uh, thread fitting. And then we go into our irrigation filter. Uh, the different size of the irrigation filter has to do with the size of particulates that it will filter. Um, to show you quickly how this works is I'm going to take this apart. It's, the bottom of it threads out and then inside of it is all of these little discs. When you open it up it allows the discs to separate so that when you want to clean it you go ahead you open this up and you can use a hose and you can spray it out and any particulates that have gotten caught in there you can clean the filter. It's also important in the winter if you're anywhere that's going to freeze that when you winterize your irrigation system that you take the bottom of this off. If you don't take the bottom of your filter off, that water will collect in the bottom of the filter, it'll freeze and it'll crack the bottom of the filter. After the irrigation filter, we have a pressure reducer. Uh, this system that we're using requires a, a pressure of uh, 35 psi. There's different pressure reducers for different, uh, for different pressure requirements, but the emitter heads require 35 psi. So regardless of whatever the incoming pressure is, uh, we step it down to 35 psi. If you do not have 35 psi going into the system, it won't work properly. So a pressure reducer, another female to, to barb hose threading, fitting. Then we have a, another short irrigation hose. Then since there's two zones, we use a T. This will split the two zones. It doesn't matter that this water goes straight and this water takes a bend. Once it's pressurized, it'll work out fine in either scenario. When we come over to our second zone, more hose clamps, then we have an elbow. That elbow just kind of turns this thing so that we have everything facing in the same direction up into the tunnel. We have some more irrigation hose, then we go into two different manual valves. If this was an automated system, these valves would be replaced with an electronic valve and there might be additional fittings and allowing that electronic valve to go into the hoses. Above this will be the two lines that will go up into the greenhouse. There's some additional parts that we have that I'll also show you. We've got two different elbows here. This allows you, once you're coming up from your system, to allow you to make some sharp bends if you need to for your system to then go down the length of the structure. We have Teflon tape. The Teflon tape we use for every place where we have any garden hose threads and we're putting them together. We send some couplers with it. This is a barb to barb fitting. This coupler allows if there's any situations where your hose gets kinked or you need to do any repairs, you can use these couplers for repairs. And then on the far end of the tunnel, when, you're, when your lines are complete, we have little plugs. These plugs will just be used on the far end of the tunnel to stop any flow from continuing down the line. 
We attach the irrigation hose to the structure, whether it's either a cable or one of the purlins, using zip ties that just simply go inside themselves and allow you to quickly snug the irrigation line up into the, the structure. We then have some different components here, which are the actual emitters. This is a called a drop assembly. It's got a bar fitting on one end, and on the other end is a press fitting, and a little thing that hangs down just to make sure that it stays upright. Then we have something here called an anti-drip egg. What this does is it equalizes the pressure in the system. This is another component that can freeze and snap in the winter. Uh, some people who want to use, your, use the system through the winter and are maintaining the temperature inside the greenhouse so things don't freeze, they like to take these anti-drip eggs out. Uh, if you take these eggs out, it will allow basically it, when you're done with the system, all the water inside the system will drain out of the system. So some people will only use these during the summer, some people take them out altogether. Then we have our emit, uh, emitter heads. This is a red, white, blue emitter head. The different color codes respond, uh, correspond with the different uh, broad, how, how the diameter in which they broadcast. The red, white, blue corresponds to the 16 foot diameter spray. How these assemblies work is the eggs and all the emitters, they all just have little press fittings. So the emitter goes and goes, the sprinkler head goes into the anti-drip egg and then the anti-drip egg just compresses right into the drop assembly. There's a tool here which is just called a punch and this punch is, the diameter of this punch corresponds to the diameter of the barb fitting. So when you, when you assemble these you start just by putting the punch into your irrigation hose. That will give you just a little bit of a hole right there. Then you take the barb fitting from your drop assembly and then you go ahead and you push that into your irrigation line and you have a nice tight fitting there so that this assembly just hangs down from your structure. Some of the tools that we're going to need, we obviously already talked about the punch, we talked about something to cut the irrigation line with. We also have a ratcheting screwdriver. This is a, for a 5 16 socket and this corresponds with the size of your hose clamps. A ratcheting screwdriver is nice because it makes quick work of the job. The 5 16 fitting also is used for the self-tapping screws and it's also used for the wire clamps. So you can use the same tool for multiple different purposes in the build. So what I like to do when I start to put this together is I start with my Teflon tape and I like to put together my pressure reducer and, and my filter. The reason I like to start there is that they, these are some of the parts that thread together so it's nice just to get those out of the way. So when you use your Teflon tape you can run it either kind of along the direction that you're going to spin or opposite. It's important that you put your Teflon tape in the direction that you need to spin. Doing it backwards because I'm trying to show the video. So that when you're righty tighty, when you're threading your irrigation filter into the next component, it's along the direction of the Teflon tape. That way you ensure that the Teflon tape doesn't uh, get reversed when you're putting it inside of what you're doing. I like to do two runs of the Teflon tape. Then we're going to put that into our pressure reducer. We simply twist these guys together. We want to make sure they end up in the lines so when it starts getting snug. I'm going to come around and snug it up so that they are in the same line. Next I'm going to go and I'm going to get both ends of the Teflon tape can get caught up on itself. I like to just tear it off and keep going. We put this on both ends of bo uh, one end on the pressure reducer and then on the other end on the filter where we're going to go into our barb fittings. So I can do both of those at the same time. I just twisted the assembly so that I can make sure that my Teflon tape is going in the correct direction. Uh, if you are worried about leaks at all, the best way to find out is after you put the entire assembly together is just to water test it, put it under pressure, and if there's any leaks, go back and snug things up. So I'm putting the fittings on each end. Uh, I like to do this by hand, but uh, also using a wrench to make sure that you're nice and tight. Uh, especially if you have any leaks, it's really important that you do get that nice, tight, and snug, but I found that by hand I can get it pretty tight. So we get that end in, and then we repeat the process on the other end. Now that we have this assembly, it's also important to note that the flow into these components is important. So on both the pressure reducer and the filter, make sure everything stays in the line, there are little arrows that show the flow rate of the water. So since the water is coming in from the garden hose, we want to make sure that we're, we're assembling these in such a way where we're keeping our directions correct. After we have that, we're going to start putting the rest of it together. It's important that we make sure that all of our hose clamps are on before we put the second fitting in because it's a lot easier to slide the hose clamps on ahead of time. 
When we're putting on our hose clamps, we try to put them on all the same way, and I'm tucking them underneath to make sure that when we're turning our manual valves that the hose clamps and any of the extra threads on the hose clamps don't get in the way of the valves from operating properly. Use a ratcheting screwdriver. I like to center the hose clamp in the center of the barbs to make sure that I get a nice tight fitting. And I'm really going to snug this down because I don't want anything to leak. Once I have that snug, I'm going to take my next component. I'm making sure that my hose clamps are in the same direction, keeping everything flat so it looks nice. I'm going to put the next fitting in, pushing it all the way down to the shoulder of the fitting, I'm lining my hose clamps up in the same direction, coming back with my ratcheting screwdriver with the 5 16 socket on it, snugging this up. and continuing the process. So now that I have this done, we're going to make sure that everything kind of stays in the line that we want it to be. We're going to go ahead, we're going to finish putting the rest of the press fittings together, put all the hose clamps on, and what we'll end up with is this manifold right here. We will put some Teflon tape in this when we put our quick connects on. When we mount this to the structure, what's going to come off the top is going to go to the two zones, but that's basically how you put it together. We're installing our overhead irrigation system inside of this movable tunnel. What's nice about the overhead irrigation system is that it moves with the structure. And our irrigation systems you can set up to have overhead and drip irrigation or combinations of both. So what we did is we ran a cable from one end of the our vertical or sorry horizontal stud about eight feet off the ground all the way from one end wall to the other end wall and used one turnbuckle so that we could tension that cable. Then we took our three quarter inch irrigation tubing as we described earlier. We put all of our ir hanging irrigation pieces in. We put them every three feet. So we have them at our collar ties and in between our collar ties every three feet. We don't have any of them in between our second hoop and the end wall for the building. Now that it's all installed, we'll go ahead, we'll take the end of that structure using the elbows of the couplings we need to. And we'll bring it over here to our manifold, which we have uh, zipped to our bracing on this side. Once it's connected, we've completed our overhead irrigation system.